Wake up, I'm leaving my house. Yeah, I'm almost ready. There's been 21 deaths. LA County has also seen. in my Snapchat memories for like two hours. <laughs> I have a lot of airheads. <laughs> like, Do you want to mail like, me um, some? Yeah, I could. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I am Ariana Perella, a senior at Armstrong Junior Senior High School. And the first part of that was how I normally spend my day whenever we have school. What it faded into was how I spend my days now. So for my film studies class, we were asked to film a vlog based off the question, how has school closure and general state of the country affected you and why? Obviously my day has changed completely. I'm doing um, schoolwork online and I am doing a lot of random activities which I normally would not never do. Why has it caused this effect on our country and me so much? The obvious reasons like we don't have to school so my day is spent differently. A lot of people um, including me are struggling with the idea of the unknown. A lot of things are really not um, set in stone yet. We could continue to get school pushed back. We can, we don't know if we're gonna have a prom. We don't know if we're even gonna have a graduation ceremony. Um, we don't know about, uh, how long this is gonna go on, how many people this is gonna affect. I'm one that's not really home a lot. I enjoy going out with friends and I like, I'm in track and I am on all these different sports and so a lot of my time, my free time during the school year is spent doing other things with my friends. But we don't have those things. It is really hard for me to be uh, able to just uh, stay in my house. I have to stay in my house and um, or just go walk around. And not having that social interaction for me is really hard because I am a social person. Another way this has affected me is my schoolwork. I am one who learns whenever... I am sat down with and I am seeing what other people are doing and then I am able to retain the information better that way and looking through a screen and having to look up my own videos on how to do something instead of my teacher one-on-one -on -one or even just like in a classroom setting uh, forcing me to pay attention because I struggle with that now too where I get distracted very easily I'm not able to sit myself down and focus Thank you for watching, and thank you, Mr. Swanson, for giving us this assignment. I guess it was kind of cool. Thank you, Archie. Uh, hello, my name is Don Swanson, and I teach film, TV, and video production courses at Armstrong High School 
in addition to media studies as well as English 12. And given the current situation with COVID-19 and the school closures, Armstrong School District and Armstrong High School is very fortunate and that we are able to, to continue offering educational services to our students through online and other means. When it comes to the TV courses, um, the way I decided to do that is to assign them vlogs every week based on their level with a different topic or idea, which the kids enrolled in independent study are going to take over deciding what those topics are going to be. Uh, we're also pretty fortunate in that Chris Barber, whom I'd like to thank at WIP TV, is able to keep programming content to air remotely. And I happen to be a um, independent video and film freelancer with my own editing suite and equipment, so we're able to keep this thing going. Um, in TV2, Film Studies is commonly referred to as TV2, their topic for the week was how has the school closure and the current state of the world affected you personally, as you just heard Archie talk about. Let's take a look at what a few more students had to say. Hello everyone, I'm Kaylee. Um, this is the first vlog I am doing. It is for my TV production class for school, considering that we are not in school right now. Um, I'm supposed to be talking about how the school closures in the general state of the country is and has affected me. It's affected me a lot considering right now that it is 4.46 a.m. on a Thursday morning and I am awake. Um, it's definitely messed up my sleep schedule. But no, in all seriousness, this really started to affect me whenever the schools first got shut down. Because I, my parents are split up and I spent equal time with both of them. I started going to my mom's house more and whenever I got back to my dad's, he told me that I needed to pick a place to stay that he didn't want me to run back and forth in and out of the house, going from place to place because at my dad's house, there are five other people, not including me that live there. So it's risky having that many people living together things will spread faster every time someone gets sick in my house everyone does i decided to stay at my mom's not because it's more lenient but it's more peaceful there's not as many people i have more space um so that's really affecting me right now i don't get to see my brothers i don't get to see my dad um so it's kind of difficult um it's also affecting me because we're not in school I never realized how much we depend on school for social interaction. Everyone thinks, you know, we get out of school, oh, fun time. No, not true, because nobody is allowed to leave their houses, pretty much, because this is technically not a break. This is time to be social distancing and taking a break, separating yourself from each other, so we don't pass this virus on more and more, so it gets, the situation becomes worse. It's kind of affecting me in a positive way as well. Um, I'm finding myself doing better with schoolwork and getting things in on time. Maybe because they're necessarily the assignments are easier right now. Um, teachers are being lenient. They try and do get us situated in what we're trying to do right now to keep up with our work. And I find it kind of easy, but it's also frustrating because some of the things, some assignments get lost in other places, but it seems like it's going well right now. The general state of the country is bothering me too right now because you're seeing it on every social media platform, you're seeing it on TV, there's commercials about it on the news obviously. You hear it everywhere you go and it's starting to get more and more scary every single day. Trying to push through it, trying to understand, trying to make sense of everything and have peace with it. You know, there's many people freaking out, stock buying, whatever. Just trying to remain calm is the best scenario right now. For sure, because if you freak out, it's just more people are gonna freak out and it's gonna get worse. But other than that, I don't really think it's affecting me much more. Seeming to do pretty well understanding this all communications okay i mean we don't get to see people i miss my friends i miss my boyfriend but we're getting through it and i'm i think that's all i have 
Hey everyone, it's Liv. I hope everyone's staying healthy and trying to remain sane. I know I'm on the verge of going insane, but hopefully this virus goes away sooner than everyone thinks and we can get back to school ASAP, fingers crossed. But anyway, I'm doing this vlog for Mr. Swanson's TV2 class, which I'm very excited about because my dream is to be a famous YouTuber, but probably never gonna happen, but everyone can dream, right? Anyway, I'm gonna be talking about how this is affecting me in my senior year and how it's affecting like our country, our state and things like that. So let's get in with the video. So right now it is currently 11.58 p.m. on March 25th and I'm sitting in my room doing some homework and watching Grey's Anatomy. This is normally what my whole day consists of. The first thing I want to talk about was how this situation is affecting me and my life. I think the biggest thing it's affecting is my social life because for those of you who know me, I am a big social butterfly. I love to talk to people. Even if I don't know them, I literally could talk to anyone about anything. And I think school plays like a huge role in that because you get to interact with people that you don't normally interact with outside of school. You get to interact with your teachers. You get to know about them. They get to know about you. You get to make bonds that you know will last forever and things like that. So that's definitely one of the biggest things. The next thing would definitely be not seeing my family or my friends. My family first, obviously, because I'm literally so close to them. Like my grandparents, not being able to see them literally breaks my heart. Having to FaceTime them just doesn't do it justice. Not seeing my friends is also a huge thing because my room is literally the hangout spot. They come here every single weekend, even on the weekdays, and I haven't seen them in forever because obviously we have the social distance, which I understand but not seeing them makes me really sad because they are like my best friends and I love being with them. And it's kind of quiet without them here. Even my mom says that. But the next thing would definitely be all the things I'm missing out on is literally making me go insane. Um, knowing that I may not get to go to my senior prom or walk at graduation literally breaks my heart and I literally cry about it every single night, yes. I know that's probably over dramatic, but that's just how I am. Obviously, I understand that there's people dying from this disease and they have it way worse than I do. And obviously my heart breaks for them, but also the class of 2020 is kind of feeling it too. Um, I probably won't be able to get to go on my senior trip, which breaks my heart because I've literally been looking forward to going to Canada since they announced that we were going there. Um, the SAC club is supposed to go to Cedar Point, probably not going to go there. I was supposed to go on a senior week trip in June, probably can't go there, but fingers crossed, high hopes, positive vibes. That's all I try to do. Pray every night to God that hopefully a miracle will happen, but I do also pray for the people that are going through this, and this is a huge pandemic that people should take seriously and things like that, but those are definitely three or four things that affect the situation is affecting me in my life. Hello everyone, today is March 26th, it's currently 3.30 and right now I'm outside doing some advanced public speaking homework, enjoying this nice weather and this beautiful day before it starts raining again. Got it. Sounds so happy. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Hi everyone, today is March 27th, 2020. Next, I'm gonna be talking about how this virus is affecting our country, our state, and even our county. How it's affecting our country is, I heard the other day that we have more cases in China, which is crazy because that's where it all started, and China had a lot of cases, so that means we have a lot more, and I'm not sure population-wise how bigger we are than China, or if China's bigger than us. I'm not too sure because I'm not like geography person, so, but anyway, Next, how it's affecting our state is it started on the eastern side of Pennsylvania and we were still in school, but other schools on the eastern side close to Philly were like canceling and we were still in school and I was like, okay, we're going to be fine. Like nobody's going to come to like Western Pennsylvania because they don't want to give it to anyone or no one's going to come to get tanning with it. But I was just being like stupid and I wasn't thinking that I was just trying to keep my hopes high. Like, no, we're not going to cancel school. And then that's where... How it affects our county goes into play. Um, there were no cases for a while in Armstrong County. It was in Allegheny County, Butler County, and then just this week it made its way here to Armstrong County, which is very scary because Armstrong County is 
decently big, but not too big. And the hospital is like six or seven minutes away from my house. So obviously they're treating the patient there. I'm not saying it's gonna like run down and come and get me. That's not what I'm saying, but it's in a closer vicinity than people that live in Rural Valley or Dayton area. Like they're further away from people who could possibly get it. And I heard the patient that has a coronavirus was a doctor and obviously someone else gave it to him or another patient, another person, which is very sad because he was probably just trying to do his job and treat his patients. And now he put the patients he's seen the past two weeks at risk. And now it's probably going to start to spread even more. I'm not sure, I hope not. That is how I feel that this virus is affecting our country, state and county. All right, we're gonna take a short commercial break. And when we come back, we'll have a little bit more of AHS TV's Best of the Nest. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves, no step had trod in black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Hey, welcome back to AHS TV's Best of the Nest. Um, my name's Don Swanson, for those who are just joining us, and I teach film, TV, and video production courses at Armstrong High School, as well as English 12 and Media Studies. And we are taking a look at submitted vlogs from students in the production courses. Kids enrolled in TV production, commonly referred to as TV1, were given the topic, uh, how do you think the online Google Classrooms are working so far, and what do you expect going forward? Let's take a look at what they had to say. Hi, my name is Jensen, and I'm a student at Armstrong High School. I'm 17 years old, and I'm filming my first vlog right now for um, my TV class. And this is supposed to be on my take on Google Classroom and where the teachers can improve. So first, I'll give you like a little spew about me. Um, I'm a cheerleader, and I play tennis. This is my first year playing tennis. I actually like it a lot. But, um... All my friends are seniors and I'm a junior and I always wanted to be like in their grade because I'm like I'm gonna miss them so much when they're gone I want to graduate and go to college with them and this is the first time I have ever said this that I'm happy I'm not a senior this year <laughs> um I never thought I'd miss school this much <laughs> like I never ever thought I'd say that but I do I want to go back I hate staying home every day even if I like could go out of the house and like do stuff I would still miss school like I miss seeing everyone every day even if I didn't like really talk to them that much I miss it um I'm supposed to be in Florida right now for a vacation I was supposed to be missing school for this and I'm not in Florida right now I'm in my room it's raining outside 
and that's probably not gonna happen for a while <laughs> but that's okay um i think this is horrible what's going on i feel bad for everyone and i send prayers out to everyone but um other than that that's my little spew um okay so my take on google classroom well i'm a student who <laughs> um i'm very like good about my grades i make sure they're always good i never ever missed a homework before <laughs> i know i'm crazy but um i i'd rather do paper and in school and like on class i don't like online it's hard for me i don't like i don't go on my phone too much so <laughs> my screen hours are very high right now <laughs> um I missed one notification one time and I didn't turn in my homework and I freaked out because I'm always like on that but I talked to my teacher and I was good so it didn't really hurt anything and he completely understood because everyone's very like all the teachers are very understanding because I know it's new for everyone and it's hard especially for people who like don't have computers or service at home and I'm very happy that our school is like taking charge of that and is helping everyone the best they can um so improvements I think the teachers may need is on communication um I know they're doing the best they can everyone's doing the best they can right now in this situation but um I think more teachers need to have like zoom or google meet classes um I'm not the best at them I had one of them already and I was muted the whole time because <laughs> I didn't know how to unmute my mic I figured it out though so I'm good but um I only have two classes doing um, meetups right now, like when you video chat. Um, some people f like find it awkward. It kind of is at first, but like you just kind of get like you need to be there to learn, and everyone has to do it, so it's not awkward, and you should get over it. Like it's not that bad. Um, but I don't think it's necessary for every single class to do it. Like. I don't think wood shops or art classes should have to do it because they're not teaching new materials. Like they can give assignments, but um, chem and like trig and stuff like that. Those are the classes I have right now online. But other than that, like I think this communication. I don't. I think everyone's doing pretty good with it. Honestly, like I'm not struggling that much. I'm doing pretty good. But um, other than that, that's basically it. So that's my first vlog. Thank you for watching, and I'll probably have another one to do, so see you later. Hello, my name is Camille Bowser, and I am part of Mr. Swanson's TV Prod class, and I am going to be talking about Google Classroom today. Um, he gave us a prompt, and it was, how well has the online classes through Google Classroom been working, in your opinion, and what do you expect moving forward? Um, I have a few thoughts on this, and I wrote them down just so it's easier for me to keep my thoughts together. Um, in general, I feel like Google Classroom is actually working pretty well, at least for me and like my friends that I talk to. Um, I know that it's really easy to access and most students already know how to use it because we've been using it for a while for like our regular classes whenever we were still in school. Um, it's easy to make sure that things are turned in because there's timestamps on everything and if something's late, like it's easy to see that. Um, and if you go like on your classes, it's easy to see like what assignments you have to do still because they'll like pop up if they're due that day or if they're due like that week or whatever. Um, and most kids like are pretty used to like using technology, so it's not that big of a difference compared to what we've been doing. And I've noticed that Google Classroom is teaching everyone responsibility and it's teaching me responsibility too because our grades are on the line and if we don't care, then our grades are going to suffer because of it. So I feel like it's teaching a lot of students like responsibility in their own work and what they have to do. Um, I've also noticed some bad things about Google Classroom and one of those is less motivation from students, which I've noticed in myself and like my friends can agree to. It's harder to motivate yourself to do things like for school if no one's really pushing you. Because like if you go to school like in person, obviously you have to do things if you're in a class, but if you're at home, you can basically do things at your own time, at your own pace, so it's harder to feel motivated to do it. Um, I've noticed that in myself, and I've also noticed that it's harder to concentrate because, once again, like you're at home and you're at your own pace, so you basically can do whatever you want if no one's like there to push you. 
So I've noticed to myself, like, I have found it harder to concentrate on my work and, like, getting my work done on time just because no one's there to, like, force me to do it like they are at school, like, with teachers and stuff. Um, I've also noticed that there's, like, less understanding of certain content, um, depending on what classes are harder for students. Like, for me, I've noticed that it's harder to understand, like, math and chem just because they're harder subjects, so it's harder to know what you're doing if there's no teacher to help you. The last thing is kind of a given no matter what you're doing online and that is more cheating from students, which I don't know anyone that's doing it, but I know that it's there because everything is online now. So it's easier to find answers. It's easier to look up things and cheat on papers and tests. Um, lastly, moving forward. I think that moving forward with Google Classroom will get easier over time and I think kids are going to get more comfortable because this has all been like a big huge transition from like public school to online. So I think that over time kids are going to get more comfortable with it and they're going to find more motivation. I also think that kids are going to get more responsible with their work and turning things in on time because right now it's just kind of like everything just started so no one really cares that much and it's just like oh like I'll turn it in later like it's not that big of a deal. But I feel like over time, kids are going to realize that, like, this is affecting our, like, real grades. So I feel like it'll lead to more responsibility in kids. Um, even though Google Classroom is easy to use, I feel like it's going to get harder coming up because we're getting to the end of the year, which means, like, testing and finals and all that stuff is going to happen. So I just feel like even though it's easy to use, things are going to get harder as time goes on, which kind of sucks. But that's just what it is. So that's about it. Um, I don't really have anything else to add. I think we're doing great and I can only hope that things will continue to do this well. And finally, kids enrolled in the Intro to TV and Video course were given the topic to cover, or basically review I should say, some form of entertainment that they've been using to pass the time given the quarantine, so to speak. Um, let's take a look. Hey all you cool cats and kittens, I'm Jessica Kinter, and today I'm going to be reviewing the new Netflix original, Tiger King, Murder, Mayhem, and Madness. So everyone's been raving about this new Netflix docuseries that was just released last week on March 20th. And if you haven't heard about it yet, you're probably living under a rock. The show is about a man named Joseph Maldonado Passage, or as he calls himself, Joe Exotic, who runs the GW Zoo, one of the largest private zoos in the country that has tigers, lions, and plenty of other animals. So I won't give away any spoilers to you guys, but the show is all about him, his zoo, and all of the other crazy animal enthusiasts in the big cat business. And the show is filled with tons of twists and turns. The best way I could describe the show is interesting. It's filled with, as the title says, plenty of murder, mayhem, and madness. It's so oddly intriguing that every episode leaves you wanting to watch more, which is probably one of its pros, but also one of its cons. Once you start it, you most likely won't want to get off your couch for the next seven hours. Now for some viewers, the show may be a bit bizarre and at times disturbing, but somehow that's what makes it so interesting. If you haven't already checked it out, I would definitely recommend going onto your Netflix account and watching it. All right, that is all the time we have for Best of the Nest this week. Again, I'd like to thank Chris Barber at WIEP-TV for helping us to keep this airing. Uh, from our virtual nest to yours, hope that you stay safe, stay sane, and have a good week.